Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Data Analysis with Dr. Veronica. In this video, we will see how to use Excel Power Query to merge sheets. I have done a previous video to show how you can merge column data. But in this video, we will see how to merge data that are on different sheets in Microsoft Excel. We will first go through how to launch the Power Query how to merge multiple Excel sheets into one sheet using Power Query. You will see how to refresh the Power Query and we will talk about some conditions on using Power Query to merge multiple Excel sheets. While you're still here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. And if this is your first time for visiting my YouTube channel. Let me know what you think about the content of this video in the comment section. Here we have the set of data, fictitious data, of course, and we have it for the month of June, July, and August. So the data have been separated to three different months, but we can see that the data all have the same structure in the sense that, for example, we have column B, which is business unit, it is the same way it is arranged in the July sheet and also in the August sheet. So this is sales and budget data for three different months, separated into three different sheets. How do we merge this data into the same sheet using Power Query? When somebody is faced with this kind of task, you might just decide to do copy and paste. But when you have multiple sheets, like up to 10 and 20 different sheets, and you are to merge the data into one sheet, then it becomes a more complicated task. The first thing that we are going to do is to convert this data that we have to tables. And how to format your data as table is there are two ways. One of the ways is to use the format as table icon that we see in the home tab in the styles group. So you just click format as table and choose any of the format here that appeals to you. The second method is to use the shortcut key which is basically control T, T for table. And we have the small dialog box that have been produced for us by Microsoft Excel. And here the dialog box is asking us, where is the data for your table? This has already been automatically selected and my table has headers. So I am going to um, allow this box to be checked because my table has headers already and I will click OK. So this automatically formats this data set that we have as table. I would do the same for July, control T and click OK. And I would do the same for August, control T and I will click OK. The next step is to name the table. Whenever you convert your range data to a table or you format your data as table, Excel automatically names it here. You can see table one table two and table three. Now, just to go through this even in more detail, when I click outside of the table, we will see that that functionality is no, no longer visible. But when I select any cell within the table that has been formatted, we will see an extra tab being visible. And this tab is called table design. It is from this tab, that we can rename the table. So all I am going to do is in this place called table name, it's in the properties group, of course, under the table design tab. And I am just going to rename it as August. Whenever you are renaming your table in the table name space, please do not put a space bar. I am going to hit enter on my keyboard for this name to be registered. I will do the same for the month of July. So for July, I go to the top left of my screen on that table name. I will just highlight the name that was given by default by Excel, and I will rename this July. I hit the enter button on my keyboard and I go to the month of June and I do the same thing. I will rename it as June. We will see later in the course of this video, why it was important for me to rename my tables. So after the data has been formatted as table and renamed, the next step is to load the tables as a query. The benefit of using 
the Power Query is so that you can refresh your merged data to reflect updates every time that you make updates to your source data. So what we do is that you go to the data tab right here and in the get and transform data group, which is by the far left, you click on get data, just the drop down that you can find, come down to other sources. And in this range of selection that has opened up for other sources, you come down to blank query. So we want to create a blank query for this exercise. I will click on blank query and this will automatically launch the Power Query Editor. The Power Query Editor has been launched and by default, the cursor is already in the formula bar. So I am going to put the equal to sign and type Excel dot current workbook. Also note that I have put capital letter E in front of Excel and also the C is in capital letter and the W is in capital letter. It is very important because the query functions are sensitive. So if you miss the initials of any of the letters, you might have an error. I open the bracket and I close it immediately. And the next thing I do is to hit the enter button on my keyboard. And this is what I have. Now we can see why it was important to rename our tables. We understand that this is for June, this is the data for July, and this is the data for August. So we can filter out the column that we do not need. So we have this error, which is created, and I am going to filter this out just by clicking on this dropdown right here, and I, am, I will uncheck this box. I will click OK, and I have the three sheets that I want to merge. So you can use this opportunity to select or to deselect any sheet that you do not want merged in the work that you have to do. The next thing is these arrows that are facing sideways. I click on these arrows to expand the column. And the reason for expanding the column is so that I can uncheck this box that is asking if I want to use the original column name as prefix. And I will explain this. So here, the original column name here is called content. Using this name as a prefix means that it's going to show in my final data content month, content business unit, content sales, because you're using that as a prefix. So this is why I unchecked this box because I do not want to use the original column name as prefix. And of course, we can ignore this that says list may be incomplete. And I will click on OK. This is what I have. My data has been merged nicely, but I have the opportunity right here to apply some more steps to make my data as beautiful as I would want it to be. So the first thing I see is that a name column has been added, which is basically the name of all the sheets. So the data is linked to the name. What I can do, because I don't need this column, is select the column. And how you select the column is just by clicking the column header and hit the delete button on your keyboard. And that column is deleted. The next thing I will look out for is the date column. The month column, rather, which I have here, is showing me the dates in the format of both the date and the time. And I do not need the time information. What I am going to do is I will click on this ABC123 box that we have here, and I will just select only date because this is what I want to see. I do not want to see the time. The next thing that I am going to do is to, to update the data type. Now we can see that business unit data type is text. So I will click on this box and just select text. And this has been updated to show as text only. For sales, the sales data are numbers. And these numbers are attached, they are currency numbers. So I will select currency right here. The next one is a budget. The budget column are also to be formatted as currency. Now the currency column is not necessarily currency, is to show the currency type as text. 
So I'll click on this and select text right here. The next column, which is department, is to show up as a text. And I have changed the type to show me a text. And for the budget line, I choose to leave it the way it is. Now we have updated the information that we have on our Power Query Editor. And the next thing for us to do is to rename this particular query sheet. So I am just going to put merged data. And you can notice that I did not give a space. The next part is the applied steps. The applied steps basically shows you what steps you undertook while you were working on the Power Query Editor. So it's more like a macro recorder that saves the steps that you undertook while you were in the Power Query Editor. So here we can see that the first one is getting the data from all the source. We filtered some rows. We expanded the content. We removed the extra column that was added and we did, we changed the types of the data. After all these is done, the next thing is to go to close and load, click on the drop down, and select close and load to. From this dialog box that has just come up right on the screen, we will see various options. Select how you want to view this data in your workbook as a table. We can export a pivot table report from here. We can export a pivot chart from here and we can only create connection. And I also want these to be um, done on a new worksheet. I just want it to remain as a table so that it will give me the ease and flexibility to do a whole range of data analysis to the data sets that I have just merged. So I will click on OK and all the data have been merged into one sheet. And we can see here it says 356 rows loaded. All the data have been merged really nicely and why it is very interesting to use Power Query to merge your sheets is the flexibility that it gives whenever you update data in your source file, which we are going to do right away. The first one is ranching and the sales amount is about 7 million, 7.7 .7 million. So I'll go to June. After changing the information here to 15,000, I come to merged data and I click on the refresh button right here. And we can see my, that the data has loaded and the update has been effected here as well. This is basically how to use Power Query to merge data that is on different or multiple Microsoft Excel sheets. I hope you liked the video. There's so many contents of the use of Microsoft Excel on this YouTube channel, Data Analysis with Dr. Veronica. In this particular video, we saw how to launch Power Query, how to merge multiple Excel sheets, how to refresh Power Query. And a point to always note is that the sheets that you want to merge have to need to be arranged in the same way. This makes it very easy to merge the, the multiple sheets into one sheet. Like I said previously, I have a video that was done on how to merge data in different columns. If you want to see that video and learn, please, the link is in the description box. Do well to click the link and watch the video. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this video. And please, if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please subscribe and also give me a thumbs up. Giving me a thumbs up makes my video to come up anytime people are searching for a related subject matter. So please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think about this video. See you in the next video.